We're back today with our second episode of our TeacherCast University online course series all about Microsoft OneNote. I'm joined again with Mike and Ari. And Ari, tell us a little bit about what we're doing today on our program. So today we'll be showing you what you see when you open OneNote. So that includes the ribbons, the canvas. And so we'll walk you through each and everything that will be important to you as a student or teacher. Now, Mike, we had talked about OneNote being platform agnostic. Are these the same kinds of features that you're going to see both on the desktop and on the mobile devices? Well, I would say that a lot of them will be the same. Some of them are a little bit different. So the Win32 platform has been around a bit longer, so it has more features. But things like the Mac, iOS, Android, the browser, they're innovating very rapidly and we're adding a lot of features to that. So most of them will be similar, but not all of them. Mike, that's fantastic. Ari, why don't you show us a little bit about OneNote and how it works? Sure. Let's jump into it. When you open up OneNote, it's very familiar in the sense that it's just a digital notebook. So think about OneNote as just having digital versions of what you have in a normal three ring binder. So you got the tabs along the top, kind of like sections. So you can just kind of click through those sections. You know, sometimes there'll be more of them and you can extend it and see what other sections are within there. You can easily add a section just by hitting the plus button and it adds a new section. And then along the right, you have the pages. So you have the ability to add pages just like you would a new piece of paper within that section of your binder. So you can just say, hey, I want a new lesson plan here as my new page. And my new section group will just call lesson plans. And from there, you can start leveraging the flexibility of OneNote being your digital binder, not a hard copy binder. I mean, you can insert different types of media. So you could insert a printout if you wanted to. You could insert a file attachment or maybe even a spreadsheet, so an Excel spreadsheet. One of the best things is being able to insert audio recordings. So if I wanted to, I could be, you know, taking an audio recording of my lesson right here and say, I want to say, um, welcome to TeacherCast. And then say, this was an important point about OneNote. I can do that all within OneNote Canvas. And then if I want to, I can even draw within the OneNote Canvas. So I can say, hello, Jeff. And even move the text if I wanted to. So being able to you know, take different elements and move it around. So really, it's a flexible canvas within a digital notebook structure. But what's best about it being digital is that you can actually search on text and search on images even. So let's say we want to search on, you know, hello. It finds even within my horrible handwriting, hello. And so that's a great example of where a teacher or student could be completing their work with handwriting and be able to easily find it later within the digital notebook structure. So that's a little bit about how you can easily get started with OneNote just by jumping in, creating a few sections and, uh, using the flexible canvas to insert different types of content and multimedia. So Mike, it certainly does seem like OneNote provides a very easy interface for somebody who's just getting started with the program. Yeah, that's what we're finding. And we actually have been seeing that anywhere from kindergartners through college graduates or PhD students can use OneNote. We actually have cases where kindergartners, first graders, third graders, fifth graders, can use OneNote in lots of different ways in the classroom. So it's definitely not something that we feel like is too complex. And I see the, that Ari was talking about the ability to add audio, add pictures, add PowerPoint, add all of these different things onto one OneNote makes it very, very flexible and easy to use. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I mean, a real world example that we're seeing in schools, we have third graders that practice their reading inside their personal class notebook structure. So they might be having little headphones and they practice reading and it inserts the audio right into their notebook. And then the teacher can go back later, listen to the audio and give feedback, give feedback on their reading. Maybe it's written feedback they give with a pen, maybe it's typing feedback, or we see teachers sometimes give audio feedback back to the student. And imagine that in a foreign language class where you can actually get that feedback in audio form, it can be really helpful. And then in related, then when the parents come in 
we have them, they listen to the parent teacher conferences and they can actually hear the audio from their kid recording, whether it was practicing reading or a foreign language. So it works really nice in that way. And so that is a little bit about how you use Microsoft OneNote. Join us for our next videos. We're going to talk a little bit about tagging and how to organize all of your OneNotes.